purpose, right? And so I dived into seeking God's face. I dived into seeking God's face for my healing, seeking God's face for my sanity, right? And God told me I have to stay in the fight. Okay, guys. Hey, Miss Kimberly Dixon Carroll said, so encouraging. I know, ain't these ladies just a bomb? These ladies are just like so bomb. And I'm excited that I'm thrilled that they're here. Um, today and all three of I'm here to get today and even though they had never met each other until you know we was backstage and the fact that you know the things they're saying is so aligned it's like of course you know I always believe that God orchestrates these things and so this our our, our last speaker for tonight um, it's Miss Corinthian Will. She is a uh, self care queen, queen of transformation. Um, we have met in a previous coaching program, and it's just been awesome. She has an amazing husband, Mr. Steve. Shout out to Mr. Steve. Shout out to Bougie Crabs in Baltimore, Maryland, doing that thing. And so I have the honor and privilege to bring up the queen of transformation. Hey, woo! <laughs> Simone, thank you so much for this opportunity and thank you for the other ladies that poured into us tonight you are i was thinking the same thing god is in a mess because even the way you lined this up you know it yeah god is right here it's everything is right on time i just love it <laughs> I'm going to let you do your thing. So here we go. All right. Thank you so much once again, guys, for um, just tuning in and having me a part of Speak Life Rewind. I am Corinthia Williams, the Queen of Transformation. And like Semine said, I'm all about self-care, self-love journey. Um, this year, well, 2020, right? 2020 was crazy for me. I know personally, and I'm pretty sure for a lot of people out there. And so um, I started a self-care journey back in 2000, what, 2019, right? But even so, even more in 2020 because of everything that was going on in the world. My husband and I, we lost, he lost his mom. I lost my, um, my mother in love due to cancer. Um, we had financial situations going on in our house. Um, I had to walk away from one business and start another. It was so much going on in my life in 2020. And I got to the point where I had depression. I was having anxiety attacks and I had to just shut everything down. You know, I had to walk away from the business, like I said, and just dive into me, tap into me. I was giving so much, so much to everyone else, right? From the business, from um, taking care of my mother in love due to cancer. We had to take care of her, um, household, children, all that stuff. Everything that us as women, as human beings go through on a day to day, but it got so overwhelming that I was going, like I said, going through depression, having anxiety attacks, eating, right? Having um, emotional eating issues, things of that nature. And I had to tap into me, right? I had to tap into, okay, Corinthia, I have to take care of me. Because a lot of times, like I said before, we put everybody ahead of us. We put all the work, all the ministry, everything ahead of us. And we're the last on our to-do list, right? And so when I, when I started tapping in, right, God had gave me um, mind, body, and soul. Now, mind you, he gave me, he spoke that into my spirit years ago, years ago. And, you know, I, I didn't know what to do with it. And years went on and things went on, life happened. But it came back to a remembrance um, in 2020, mind, body, and soul. And so I looked at myself. I was overweight. I was frustrated. I was just ill from the inside. And so I dived into healing myself, right? I dived into the word of God. Right. And I'm so grateful to be on a platform of women of believers. Right. And so I dived into seeking God's face. I dived into seeking God's face for my healing, seeking God's face for my sanity. Right. And God told me I have to stay in the fight. I have to stay in the fight. 
It was so much more that he had for me to do, right? I had to stay in the fight and therefore I had to take care of myself and realize that self-care isn't selfish, but it's necessary. So what is the fight all about, right? So the ladies ahead of me, they talked about emotional eating. They talked about you're worthy, right? Staying in the fight is, is not giving up on you. Staying in the fight is not giving, on, giving up what God told you you are worthy of. Staying in the fight is fighting against those temptations of opening that refrigerator, right? Staying in the fight for me was finding my sanity, finding a place where I can love me unapolog unapologetically, right? And so I'm going to break down the word fight on tonight. The F for fight is faith right faith not only did i have to have faith in god and realize that i have to do some drastic things in my life in order to get out of the bout of depression in order to uh, free myself from my own mental torture i had to have faith in me right a lot of times when we're healing a lot of times when we're going through something we want to put our faith in everybody else right we want to put our faith in our spouses our jobs our bosses but what 2020 taught all of us <laughs> we gotta have some faith in us right so i had to have faith not only in god but in me and believe that you know what corinthians you can do this you don't have to go through depression. You don't have to give up on you. You can heal yourself. You got to have faith and realize that, you know what? It's necessary. I have to take care of myself because if not, guess what? I'm no good for nobody else. I know that's bad English, but I'm no good for nobody else. So I had to stay in the fight and first have faith in myself. I had to be intentional. The I in faith is for intentional. I had to be intentional about who and what and where and all the things that I want in my life. A lot of things, a lot of times we are on autopilot. Can we, amen, right? We are on autopilot. We wake up. We do the, do the necessary things for the morning. We go to work. We work nine to fives. We come home. We cook dinner take a shower, go to bed, do it all over again. And I saw myself in that same rut. I saw myself just going through the emotions, right? I saw myself just constantly just going through the emotions, going through the act of just doing, right? But I had to realize in order to fight for my own sanity, in order to fight for healing myself, in order to fight to be the woman that God truly created me to be, I had to be intentional and live in the moment. Be intentional about what I say, be intentional about what I do, be intentional of where I go, just be in the moment and be intentional. A lot of times we just say things, right? We say things that aren't true. I had to re, I had to, what is it? Redirect my words. I had to start speaking life. I had to speak those things that aren't as if they are, right? I had to start speaking healing. I had to start speaking life into my family because I was just once again on that hamster wheel. I was being a robot. I was just going through the motions. But then I had to realize, you know what, Corinthians, if I want to change some things, I got to change me first. And so I had to start being intentional and speak life into my situation. The G for fight is gratitude. Gratitude. Oh, my goodness. If we only knew how important gratitude is, right? I had to show gratitude and be thankful for where I was. Yes, I lost the business. Yes, my husband lost his job, right? We talking about in the midst of a pandemic. My husband lost his job. My, my mother in love that, that, that treated me like a daughter. Mind you, my mother passed away when I was nine years old. So she treated me like a daughter. She passed away. All these tragic, tragic things happened in my life in 2020. And God said, Corinthia, you got to find gratitude. You got to be, you got to find every day something to be grateful for. So I learned to write in my journal and had a gratitude list. I don't care if, God, thank you for waking me up this morning. 
God, thank you for allowing me to cook breakfast for my family this morning. Thank you, Lord, that we had time to spend together this morning. Thank you, Lord, that my kids don't have to go to school. Now they're in home, in school, and they're safe. You know, I had to find things to be grateful for. See, sometimes we just go through the emotions. Sometimes we just do things and just live life and just make it to Friday when payday come, right? But we have to be grateful for where we are, regardless of where we are. We might not be where we want to be, but be grateful for where you are and what you do have. So in my fight for my sanity, in my fight for losing weight, right? I gained so many, so much weight. I, I was emotionally eating, right? I didn't know my true identity. So I was fighting for me, right? But I had to also show gratitude. Zig Ziglar said, gratitude is the healthiest of all human emotions. The more you express gratitude for what you have, the more likely you will have even more to express gratitude for. How, how dope is that, right? The more we show gratitude, the more we say, thank you, God. The more we say, Lord, I thank you. The more we say, you know what? I am so grateful and happy and thankful the more things to be grateful for will come into our lives. So we're talking about standing in the fight, right? The F is for faith. The I is for intentional. The G is for gratitude. The H is for happiness. Happiness. Okay, so I didn't say this in the beginning, but I'm a certified life and happiness coach. <laughs> See, God will test you right where you are. He'll test you in the things that you are supposed to be doing for, for others, right? What you're called to do. You'll get tested in those situations. And so, happiness. I had to learn to be happy. It was so much sorrow going on in my own home, in my own family, out in the world, that I was just sad, right? I was sad. I was just feeling overwhelmed. Yeah, I, I have this certification. Yeah, I got that in my title. Yeah, that's cute and all. But it's one thing to go and study for something. And it's another thing to have life teach you something. Life experiences. Yeah, I can read a book and say, okay, you need to do this and this. But when you actually physically going through it, it's totally different. So I had to find happiness. Like I said before, being intentional. I had to live in the moment. I had to look outside the window and, and find, find something to be happy for. Oh, God, you got the sun out today. Thank you, Lord. I'm happy. Right? I had to go through pictures. I had to, you know, go through memories. I had to journal. I did a lot of journaling in my self-love journey. Right? And I suggest that you start journaling. If you don't journal now, journal. Start writing those emotions out. Start writing those gratitude lists. Find your happy spot. Find what makes you happy. I like to paint. I like to draw. I like to use my hands and be creative. So I had to go back to those things that I used to do in order to bring back that happiness, in order to bring that smile back to my face, right? I had to schedule the time to do these things because like, once again, when life happens, we go through the emotions, right? We on autopilot, right? And so find happiness when you're, when you're in that fight, whatever your fight is, right? Don't be so focused on getting to the end of the fight, getting to the win, right? But actually find happiness. Be grateful. Have faith and believe in yourself. Be intentional. And lastly, the T. The T in fight is transformation. How could it not be? You know, how could it not be transformation? <laughs> yes, transformation. A lot of times when we are in a fight, right? A lot of times we just swing it. You know, you just swing it. You ducking, bobbing and weaving, right? You just going for it. You're trying to get that win, right? You're trying to get that W. But a lot of times in life, we get a lot of L's. We get a lot of losses. And I'm learning 
And I've been teaching the ladies in the Queens tribe that we have to go through, grow, excuse me, we have to grow through what we go through. Let me say that one more time. We have to grow through what we go through. And so when we're transforming, when we're in our transformation process, right? We gotta be able to grow. I had to grow through each of those situations I was in. From the death of my mother in love, from the pandemic that was going on in the world, from the loss of a business, the loss of a job, a loss of income. I had to grow through it. I had to find how can I make, how can I become better from this? What from this situation have I learned? What can I pull out of this to make me feel better? To make me love myself again? To make me be the woman who I know God has created me to be? And so in my transformation process, I was able to write an ebook, 31 Days to Greater Self-Love. Let me tell you, when you in God's face, right? Sometimes he gotta, you gotta hit those rough patches sometimes in order to get, in order for God to get our attention. Because once again, we're in autopilot. So in my transformation, in my fight for my sanity, in my fight for loving me and taking time out for me, right? I was able to write the ebook and I went back to mind, body, and soul. So I said, God, what is this mind, body, and soul? I'm working on me, but I just feel you want more of me. And so once again, growing through what I growing through what I go through, I learned in God speaking to me that I want you to be able to pour into other people, pour into specifically women, women who are seeking my face, women who want to transform, women that's in a fight and don't know who their who their opponent is, women that are, you know, at that breaking point, because that's where I was. God uses our pain, right? He used the pain that we go through in order to process us to our purpose. Let me say that one more time. He uses our pain, right? To process us to get to our purpose. And so now I can sit back and look at things. I can see things a little different because I got on the other side of that fight. And now I'm able to help other women to fight. Now I'm able to help other women to birth that purpose. Now I'm helping other women to learn that self-care is necessary. I'm helping other women to figure out, guess what? I am worthy to get through this. I could be all that God created me. I am that queen. Right? I help other women adjust their crown and realize, you know what? I'm growing and I'm getting better each and every day. And I thank God for this process. And they're looking at life differently. They're unleashing the queens within. So on tonight, I just wanted to share with you guys my process of finding the queen within me and how I had to fight. I had to stay in the fight in order to get better. And I had to learn that self-care is not selfish, that it is truly necessary. Thank you. So then she told me something about a feedback loop about events in itself 
doesn't have an emotion attached to it, but it's our perception of what we think about that we attach it to. And I was like, this deep, this lady, you done, you done helped me. And so just being able to really know, even when I go through, I can still help, but I got to get help for myself. And all the stuff you talk about, I'm like, oh my God. I always know, like, when I do these, I always know it's for me personally. So mm -hmm. everybody else, I'm glad y'all get something. But I'm telling you, it was like, oh, from even... It's Kimberly talking about being a good thing in, in, in yourself. It's not about a ring. Because, you know, sometimes you see people like, you know, you and, um, y'all all been married and, and you and Kim are still married. Now, sometimes a single person you look and you see the happy pictures and, you know, you see the family. It's like, oh, man, maybe I want that this life. But you got to keep doing some work. So you, you blessed us. I love that fight. I'm going to definitely, um, keep it in mind. But thank you so much. There was so many, um, comments that people were saying. Like, I was saying, like, my God when I won't cry, but, you know. Uh, so you talked about that comment from Zig Ziglar about showing gratitude and being thankful and finding things to be thankful for. I was like, oh my God. And one of the things I talked to her about specifically is about just my own view of how I felt, how you saying have faith in God and have faith in yourself. Mm -hmm. That God, I really believe, you know, he won't put more on us than we can bear, but sometimes it, it, the, the hope that the, the load can get heavy. Yeah. And it's like, I want to put this down and, and Lord I'm going to put this down right now it doesn't mean I don't love you it don't mean I don't want to keep going but this thing is heavy right now so let me put this down so and then like you talk about drawing you know drawing the brain things that you like to do back to be happy so this was <laughs> I'm going to bring the other ladies back so y'all can die along with one another because this was this was like wow so ladies I don't know y'all can 